Hi, welcome to Declaring Your Destiny. I'm Audra and Carolyn's here. We have a special guest. We are have John Dowling. And just remember that we are a ministry that believes in miracle signs, wonders, and prayers answered. Hallelujah. And so we have, and we are so thankful for John Dowling to take a little bit of time to be on our show and share with you his wisdom. Um, and I'm, I'm not even good. I'm just gushing about it because I'm excited and I'm ready to take some notes. So if you want to know some things about some stuff, get your notes, get your pen. And Carolyn, how about you get us started? Okay. Uh, welcome, John. We're Thank you for joining us today. And um, I understand you're going to talk to us a little bit about med beds and currency. So d would you like to start with med beds? Sure. Well, first of all, ladies, thank you for having me on, on the podcast. I, I greatly appreciate it. And i um, uh, thankful for the opportunity to be able to be here to talk to you and in my respective audiences. And in, in some cases, Carolyn intertwined. Uh, it's great to meet you as well, Audra. I, I definitely enjoy the spirit that you bring when you are on here. So uh, thanks for the opportunity. And, and I pray that this blesses your audience respectively. Um, sure. <clears throat> I'll take it a piece at a time because these subjects can be very um, information filled and lengthy. So I'm going to do my best, folks. Give me a little rope here to be, uh, I'll be as succinct as I can. But if I don't explain some of the information, it will get lost in translation. So um, I'm going to share, since you allowed me to share the screen, I'm going to start with this and talk about, because I think picture set, says, a, uh, speaks a thousand words, as they say. So this is the first one. Um, so med beds have been around since the 1950s that we know of militarily. They've been suppressed from the public for a long time. In their essence, they are Tesla technology, light frequency therapy. Uh, President Trump talked about it in his first term uh, with Regeneron and HCQ and other things. And he talked about alternative um, health solutions. And that was kind of a very sort of tacit uh, move to the med beds. Um, the, we do have a case study of somebody who actually got in one in 2022. I have to keep their name obviously private, but they go by the code of the Marine. This gentleman served in Korea and Vietnam, a couple tours of duty, and then served under the Department of Defense for five different presidents. He retired just prior to President Trump coming in, in 26, at the end of 2016. <clears throat> and so... Uh, a couple of years ago, he got the nod from somebody at Walter Reed in Virginia that they would allow him to come in. If you know anything about Marines, their motto, Semper Fi, always faithful. They, he gave up his spot to a fellow military Marine friend who, has, who had stage four pancreatic cancer. In the old medical term in the world, that is a, a death bomb, a death nail. Uh, so his friend came all the way from California, um, he got in a med bed. He had a 200% white and red blood T cell count increase, and it reversed the clock back 30 years. This gentleman is now walking with his wife in a park that they haven't been in in almost, at that time, a decade. So it's a case study that they do exist. It's not a figment of imagination. We think because we can't see things that that's all there is to be seen. But you ladies know that that not everything we think we see is there. It's a lot of it's behind the curtain, and it comes out at the time. Now, yes, I know everybody's going to say, yeah, it should have happened years ago and we're losing people. I, I get that. I don't have a seat at the table. I'm not in control of those things. Okay, folks, I've lost people too, but they will come out at whatever time is felt is appropriate. Um, typically, they have been used for military, like I said, children who have been in the sex trafficking and pedophilia world that have been rescued from all over the world that have traumas helps them to recover so they can have some normalcy of life. Now, the picture I'm showing you, there are many different iterations or types of med beds. This is a prototype of one of the med beds that was sent to me a year and a half ago. The idea of this is it's supposed to be a mock med bed that you would have potentially in your house. You can see the onboard computer screen. And it's, it looks to me much like a, uh, an open coconut uh, with a, sort of an open MRI, if you will. None yes. of us like getting an MRI, yeah. but some of us have been in there, but this gives you a lot more comfort so you don't feel claustrophobic. There are some other ones, the ones that I think, I don't, I don't know, I've not been there, but what I've been told by said people is that the ones that they have seen inside of Walter Reed look like a very large, wide and deep um, glass enclosed cases that have anti-claustrophobic 
uh, material so you don't feel like you're trapped. They, they're very wide and deep, so you got plenty of space and width. And uh, they're antimicrobial, so because of light and frequency, they're constantly basically disinfecting themselves. So this is just to give people a, a one overall example of what one of the med beds may look like, okay? So I'm going to turn to this. I don't know if you can see this. I, um, let me see if I, I might have to stop sharing and go back in. So just bear with me, folks. Um, this was sent to me by my friend, uh, Kathy, who lives in Owensboro, Kentucky. This was sent on Monday. This, as you can see, it's not a made up image. It's a real place. You can see the street signs. Um, they're doing something called Health Force Kentucky. Now, my friend Kathy has worked in the medical field for some time. She's worked in an elder nursing care facility and some auxiliary hospitals. So she has some familiarity with how they have worked their procedures, and she's not for the traditional sort of barbaric medical uh, techniques that have been used up to this point. The point of this, though, is to show people that they have something called Health Force Kentucky. So they're doing these mobile units. Um, what she believes is happening is that they're starting to slowly acclimate the public to alternative solutions in medicine. You'll notice um, I do a weekly wrap up. So you both know of, of sort of the uh, geopolitical financial news events, some of the, the passings of notable people as a changing of the guard. And we're seeing an uptick in closures of big harmakia like CBS, Walgreens, Rite Aid. Rite Aid last week, if you don't know, closed all locations within Michigan and Ohio. Ask anybody that's there, they will tell you that. So they're doing this very systematic and slow rollout to phase it in because if you, you just rip the Band-Aid off, you're going to create a cognitive dissonance, the likes of which would be very unfavorable, to say the least. So I'm going to stop the share and then pick it up one more time. Um, this is what she also sent me that they are sending the public um, as far as, let me see if I can move it over here a little bit, Health Force Kentucky, transformative education, da, 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 groundbreaking collaboration, high-tech healthcare. So they're, they're kind of being subtle and vague about it, but they're alluding to the fact that there's new solutions and high-tech things coming out. So again, all of this is a means to slowly wean the public over to where we've, where we've been and where we're heading. So um, MedBeds, the point of the story is that MedBeds are very much a, a real thing and uh, they are going to come out to the public. I don't have the date. I don't know any of that. I don't have a seat at the table, but um, I would think that if we're seeing this, uh, we're probably seeing it sooner than later. Um, there was a big thing that President Trump came out with about right to try, and that was uh, legislation for FDA approval of patients who you know, or at their last resort that all other traditional methods have been exhausted. You give them opportunity to try different things like, you know, different cannabis solutions, different um, alternative, you know, practices that might give, you know, when you're, when you're on your deathbed, you, you need every chance you can get. And so through right to try, it expediates the med beds to happen without the FDA having so much oversight to blockade it because it's not in the old medical world's interest for this to happen because they're losing their proverbial cash cow. But the point is med beds are real. They're coming out. They will help people. They can age regression. They can uh, restore limbs and lungs. They can remove autism. They can help with, uh, you know, fibromyalgia with Alzheimer's. Virtually anything is curable with the med beds through this exciting technology. So I'll just leave it at that. I just have a quick question for you, John, if you don't mind me asking, because I'm sure. learning all this too. When this finally does come out, we don't know when, but when it does, is this going to be something that's going to be affordable for everyday people like me? Or is this going to be something that's going to be something for the wealthy to start with and then maybe trickle down to the rest of us? <coughs> I mean, me. I know no, I'm no, asking no. you to speculate, but I'm just curious. No, it's fine. Um, I can tell you what I know. For the public, it will be free because they've already been tested militarily and on the children. So they've ran case studies before they ran to the public. No, the public will, um, part of the reset that we're going to talk about is funding through the bonds, is funding that for the public to have it. That's one of the benefits of Masara is that they will be free to the public. Now, if you want a home med bed, kind of like the one I showed you, I'm sure there'll be a cost. I don't know what it will be, but I think for those people who want a home med bed, they're going to have monies through said reset to be able to do that. 
And I think it'll be at a fraction of the cost of it. But no, for the average everyday person, it won't be an issue. Okay, great. It's good so news. <laughs> I have a question. You sure. said it put this um, this very sick man, it gave him back 30 years. So, um, you know, I'm, I like to fight the good fight. And I'm trying to fight the fight of and stay youthful looking as well. <laughs> Will that help? Yes. So in our body, we have something called temular cells. They're like antennae. And that's the receptacle that deals with processing of, you know, energy stimulus and ultimately the aging process. Now, with all the crap in the air and in the food and the water and everything, the medications that create more side effects than benefits, that starts to demonize the temular cells and create cell death. With the med beds, it targets with respect to, to age regeneration, it targets the temular cells, feeds the cells back to their original condition. There was, I, I had tried to find the document. I'm sorry, folks, I wasn't able to do so, but there was a document out there. Uh, my mentor, Don Ward had told me about a couple of years ago, New England Journal of Medicine, which is a widely known publication, respect them other otherwise people know who they are. They did, a, they did a private case study. I think you had to buy a membership or something to get the document, of course, but they did a case study. They took an 80-year-old woman out of a nursing home and they put her into a med bed. And I don't know how long it took, whether it was an hour, 30 minutes, I don't know. Well, obviously, I wasn't there. Um, but within a short period of time, it regenerated her, her organs, her, her, you know, her stem cell, her cell walls, everything. And it brought her back to the age of 30 where she could have children again. So this thing, this, this does actually reverse age considerably. And so this isn't to get people excited or fall. And it really does do that. How they're going to roll it out. I don't know. I think it's going to be something like what I showed you where they're going to kind of wean it out. Um, I know that there are some places in Texas and Florida that already have them overseas in Germany and the Netherlands. I know they've been, I think Sweden also, they've spotted some. Um, there's a coordinated effort and that's above my pay grade, but yes, it will definitely help with age aggression. Wow. That's exciting. <laughs> yes. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. No problem. So John, you've got some currency topics that you're going to share with us. I do. So let's start at the top with <clears throat> the dinar, since that's the, a uh, proverbial ribbon cutter. And the reason if people think why did our first, well, it was prophesied by the late great Kim Clement. Uh, that was one of my favorite prophets has been in my humble opinion, one of the most accurate modern day prophets of our time. Yes. And he said that there, I think he said it about almost 20 years ago, a little over 20 years ago in 2021, it's, it's on record on video that there would be a change in, in the Middle East, specifically in the Dinar and Southeast Asia, which we'll get to in a minute. But I think you and I, Carolyn, talked about it last time on our podcast in practicality terms. Uh, the Dinar re refers to Mesopotamia, the land of uh, yes. the Garden of the Milk and Honey. And, and uh, so it just makes sense. In fact, if you can back me up on this, Carolyn, I believe there's Old Testament scriptures that refer to the Dinari way back yes. in the day. So. Yeah. It is mentioned several times in the Old Testament. So this is literally biblical, just like Solomon said, nothing new under the sun. What I'm going to do is point out what I believe are some interesting factoids that, that certainly got my interest over the years. Some of this, your, your audience may or may not know. I don't know. Here we go. Um, so let me, let me ask you ladies a question to kind of stimulate the conversation. There are many drugs throughout the world, PCP, cocaine, meth, all types of barbiturates, but there's one drug in particular that has harmed everyone in the world that we have taken, whether we know it or not. Do you know what it is? Caffeine? <laughs> not far off, actually. <laughs> Nicotine? I don't know. The U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar has been a drug to the entire world, and the U.S. deep state, Cabal, yeah. have enslaved the entirety of the world with said U.S. dollar. An example would be Saddam Hussein and Gaddafi. We were told that these guys were bad guys who were bad to the deep state. They weren't bad for us as the public. So then you say, why were they bad? Because Saddam Hussein and Muammar Gaddafi were the only two people when the U.S. started trying to implement central banks around the world that said no to a central bank. They wanted a gold-backed currency for their respective countries. They wanted nationalism and sovereignty. 
And so they were killed off for not doing that. An example would be in the 1950s, the dinar when Hussein was, I don't know how old he was, 8, 10, 12 years old, I know, but when he was a little kid, the, um, the dinar was actually five to one against the dollar. Now, we don't do dates and rates here. I'm just giving an historical fact point for those who want to check it. We've already checked it. And uh, it, that's huge. So it gives you some idea of historical replication, right, where we're headed. Um, now, there have been, um, and I'm going to give full credit and disclosure, as, always, as I always do, to the source. Patriot Intel report known as Phoenix PIR had put this out. I used to be a member of his channel for several years. So I was taking notes. He was, he's a, a former retired army ranger. So he's got some good skin in the game. <clears throat> and he pointed out to me that a lot of government contractors would go over to Iraq to help with respect to, you know, uh, mining and, and drilling for, for, you know, oil and for water sources, because you're dealing with uh, a, a basically a desert, right? Just like Dubai. And you got a lot of sand, but within that sand, six feet underground, under the sand, you'll find a plethora of gold, diamonds, rubies, sapphires. For example, did you ladies know that Iraq is the largest source of phosphorus in the world? So yeah. if you've had or experienced phosphorus, chances are it came from Iraq. So the government contractors would dig these grates, basically, like we see on our streets with the sewer grids. So you picture that, and they would dig to try to find the water sources to help the country out. And do you know how they got paid? They got paid by finding gold flecks in the sand. So whatever bits of 24 pure carat gold they found, they got to keep. That was their payment. So Iraq is really rich in a lot of resources. They're 30th in the world in gold. I just mentioned phosphorus. They've got diamonds. They've got silver. They've got obviously oil. They're the number two oil producing nation in the Middle East. And they're going to be a powerhouse. They're going to have some of the largest buildings in Baghdad and in, in the Middle East and the top in the world. So they'll be the next Dubai. So what you're investing in is historical replication and the future combined. Uh, let's see. So that, I mean, that that's kind of it in a nutshell, but that's what I wanted to share about the dinar. So we had a, uh, a viewer email me and asked me, this might be a good time to ask you this, about buying the dinar and the dong, the Vietnamese dong, and what currency, what exchange would be the best one to buy them with? Right. So let me start off the top of what I should have said in the beginning, and I'll, I'll preface it here. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not constituted as financial advice. I'm merely sharing information with our team that's been garnered over many decades. I mean, I've been in this 11 years. We've got team members who have been in this for 25. So, you know, <laughs> I say prayers for them all the time because anytime that I feel impatient, I just think about how long they've waited. It's all relative. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I recommend the viewers do their own diligence. There's a lot of great um, dealerships out there. Um, there's at least six that I know of within America that are treasury backed that they can exercise. We have... Um, we have a, a currency resource with our channel for people who are overseas, who specifically who can't get access to the U.S. because we're so spoiled here. You know, we we're so indulgent about everything. We forget how blessed we are and we need a reprise on that. This is a good example. So, you know, people say, well, you know, oh, you know, this currency is this or that. But I'm like, you got to remember, there's the rest of the world does not have access to the plethora of options we have here in America. So for those folks as an alternative, or maybe some who might just want to shop around, we have a, a currency resource on our channel that they can go to our channel and see that. So that would give them at least seven options, but there's a lot of great companies um, that they can choose from that will give them a receipt and give them all the documentation. We always recommend that you buy a black light. It's just a small box. It's a 10, $20 box and get it on Amazon, eBay, some of the companies even provide one if you buy a certain amount of currency. And it's just an ultraviolet black light. You go to, to a room, you've got night or you darken it artificially. You just put the currency under it and in one second, it should light up the denominations. If it doesn't do that, then you probably don't have legit currency. That's how it's a cheap way to tell before you go into the bank to exchange. So I just recommend people, even if you're buying from a, a place that does that, do your own diligence and just take the extra you know, a few minutes to do your part. So that would be my answer to that. Okay. 
Okay. And that's, that's the best answer. Yes. And ask the Holy Spirit, of course. Yes. Well, yes, absolutely. Okay. So what's next, John? Okay. And yeah, I think that's an important point, Carolyn, that you made that I, I thank you for catching that. Um, before we go into the dong, I would tell people the same thing you said, you know, ask God what you're supposed to be in and for how much he's your perfect financial advisor. He made everything. So let's just ask him and not bypass him to go ask 50 different people what they think. Like you said, on my show last time. So he may say, I just want you in dinar, or I just want you in dong, or I just want you in this, or I want you in a combination, but you won't know till you ask and, and wait for the response. That being said, um, the dong is one of my personal favorites folks. And I'll tell you why. Um, Number of reasons, massive, great workforce of people. Those people are some of the most hardworking, industrious people I've ever met. Um, in my music background, seeking investors, I dealt with the Vietnamese investor for the better part of the last decade. And he had family and government that confirmed that the dong is real and it was going to happen. Funny enough, he told me in 2018, it could take <laughs> three to six years. Well, here we are now coming on the precipice. And so... What may, many people may or may not know is that oh, since 2010, they've had arguably one of the world's largest GDP, gross domestic product, what products they make and what profit they make against that in layman's terms. And so they've had almost a 34% GDP year over year, at least last I checked, uh, mm -hmm. for the last 10, 12, some odd years. When country, when, when corporations were leaving China to go elsewhere to find cheaper options, they nearly 70% of them have gone into the, uh, to the arms of Vietnam as a country because it's, it's easier to work with that manpower even in China, certainly more than America. They're rich in silver. Um, pay attention to that one. Yes, Gold. I uh, they also are, are rich in Brent crude oil in their oceans. They have some of the purest, richest Brent crude. And here's an interesting factoid I don't want to forget. Are any of you ladies a fan of cinnamon? Yes. <laughs> Beyond the obvious health benefits, did you know that roughly 60% of the world's cinnamon supply comes between Vietnam and Indonesia? So they, you would think we have plenty in America, and I'm sure we, we do, but it's at the moment less expensive or perceived to be to get it from Vietnam and Indonesia. So that's a, a sort of a, a, an X factor that they've got that, you know, might be of interest to people. So it's diversification of, of you know, resources under the ground is what I'm getting at. Yes. There's something yeah. else that's very important to note. In August, four years ago of 2020, uh, President Trump did what they called a 2020 Indian Asia Pacific initiative, where he took nearly $1 trillion of Federal Reserve money to quickly bankrupt the Federal Reserve as, as we move into the Treasury and go into an asset-backed standard again. But he put it, they put in almost a trillion dollars into Vietnam. You have to ask yourself, why would they do that? Because they know what they've got. I, I guarantee you, President Trump is invested in Dinar and Dong. I, I know that to be true. I've interviewed uh, people like Jim Willie who have confirmed it. President Trump has a, um, what do you call those? A skid pallet, knee high full of Dinar. So he's going to be just fine. And then He's probably got an equivalent of that in Dong. Here's the other beautiful thing about Dong. It's more economical than the dinar. Why, you ask? Okay. So we'll take a baseline example. If you were to spend, I'm not saying you have to spend this, and people don't freak out. I'm just giving an example. I know people go, I don't have that kind of money. Just relax. We're just making an example. If you took a thousand US and you side by side comparison dinar to Dong, if you spent well, first of all, it would cost you anywhere from the range is usually somewhere between 970 US to 1200 US for a million dinar. Okay, so put that to the side. You spend that on Dong. I haven't checked Forex lately, but the last I checked, it was 23,446 Dong to dollar. So if you do the math on that for a thousand US, you would get roughly somewhere, but depending on where you get it and when you get it, you would get it somewhere between 15 to 20 million Dong. Okay, for that same amount of money. Okay. Now, again, we don't do dates and rates. I'm just making examples. We have a pretty good idea where we think it's going to be. But what I always tell my audience is stop worrying about that. That's the wrong question. The right question is, can God trust you with this wealth? 
Can he trust you to steward it to his people and not solely for your own purposes? Because if he can see in your heart, your intentions are right. You'll be blessed beyond imagination. Ephesians 3.20. We know yes. what that says. Yes. So just to make an example for people to get a visual matrix, take it, just say it's one-to-one -one level, right? Level playing field. Trump said that in 2017. We've shown our audience. You can go and archive the videos. So let's say it goes to a dollar. So for, for the million dinar, you would get a million US dollars, right? right? For the dong, if it goes between 15 and 20 at one to one, you're looking at a 15 million to $20 million return. It's a pretty significant difference. So you get a lot more value for the return. So that's, that's why I like, those are the reasons why I like the dong so much more um, because I just think it's, it's the, the X factor or the dark horse that not everybody's watching. And you're right, Carol, and most people, when they associate Vietnam, they think about the war, but they don't think about where, how much that country has climbed since then. Right. They're some of the most stealthy strategic people I've met. They'd be great poker players because they never show their hand. They don't show a lot of emotion. And, and this, that's very, very purposeful. Yeah, strike pace. Well, yes. Right. So what we're waiting for with dinars, we're waiting for Israel to do their secret attack on the nuclear power plants per the prophetic word of Kim Clement. If people go to our telegram, we post a lot of good copious information there that people can see and read and, and learn. So if you don't mind sharing the telegram, I think that'll help later on. And you can see visual matrices of what we're talking about. Once they do that attack, and also the central bank governor, who is a corrupt Iranian proxy. See, that's the other thing. People have to realize the rate that they're seeing on the Forex, which is the, the Dow Jones of the currency industry, that's not the real rate. They don't tell you that. The real rate is in the Ministry of Planning and the private sector that hasn't been released yet. So you also have corrupt U.S. deep state militias in Iraq running the show, keeping the dinar down and using, making the folks use the dollar and making the corrupt politicians live off that like a drug, money laundering. You also have Iranian proxies in the government who uh, Iran is the big brother to Iraq. See, so what do big brothers always do? They kind of keep the little brother down to, to con, you know, cause they want the, the control and the power that is going to be wrested away through Israel. Now, Vietnam, what we're waiting for is interesting. They don't have a financial issue. They have a corruption issue, not unlike the rest of the world. Their issue is communism. I think that most people know that. So they need something to break their fall. Well, we believe that will be the China-Taiwan conflict. So Putin has already been dealing with Ukraine for a while. He's already been gaining ground. But of course, the fake media isn't going to tell you that because it's not in their interest because the deep state has been in bed with Ukraine for money laundering, pedophilia, uh, drug running, guns, traffic, you name it, they're in it. So they also have something called the Azov Battalion. The Ukrainian the Azov Battalion are a bunch of basically Nazis who have been subjugating Ukrainian residents or citizens for a long time. Putin has gone in a couple of years ago, per PR showing me, and he's gone into Donbass and Lugansk. Those are Russian provinces with Russian nationalists who are loyal to Russia who speak Russian. They've gone in there, given food and water. They've rebuilt a lot of the condos and the apartments. Why aren't they telling you that? Hmm. Well, we know the answer to that, but that will come out. He's going to do a Moab to take out Ukraine here shortly. And when he does, he's going to go running in with Xi, and they're going to go in and they're going to form an alliance to deal with Taiwan. Now, they're not going to create World War III, even though it's going to look that way. It has to look optically a certain way. Right. What they're doing is freeing up some of the people, actually, because there's two sides in China. There's the CCP and there's the Republic, much like in America. There's the Maritime Law Corporation, and there's the Constitution. There's always two sides to the coin. They're going to free up Vietnam at that point enough, not 100%, to free them up out of communism to let the dong run. And that's how we believe, per Kim Clement, that's going to happen. So that's kind of my, uh, my answer on the dong. That's exciting. That's really yes. exciting. Yes. Yep. So... Um, do you want to talk about silver, any? Sure. Um, what do you want to What do you want to know specifically? Okay. So, um, you know, the Lord told me that silver would implode 
it before it explodes. So you and I had a conversation about that a week or two ago. So perhaps you might want to speak on that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the central banks here in America, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, I mean, they're all, you know, two different feathers of the same bird. They're also pressing down silver because they're trying to control the price because they're trying to scarf it up off the market. But right. people are getting savvy and they're buying it, which they should be. Because remember, we talked about this, Carolyn, in your last podcast, that uh, silver is already a huge component now of manufacturing. It's in everything we have, our watches, our phones, our computer screens we're on now components in cars, on and on and on. Colloidal silver, you can ingest it as food and the like for supplements. Um, it's going to become more so for manufacturing for AI robotics and the new technological age, right or wrong. So it's going to become more and more scarce, which will drive the price up. And they know that. Um, so yeah, silver is definitely, and again, we talked about it with Vietnam. They're going to be backing their currency in silver. So in essence, when you buy currency, you're actually buying de facto, you're buying metals. Uh, mm -hmm. I checked it today. It was just under $30. I think a couple of days ago, they let it go over 30. So it's going to, uh, it's like cutting the grass. You can cut the grass, but eventually it's going to grow back and it's, you keep fertilizing, it's going to grow back twice as hard, twice as long. And right. so the more they try to, to, to tamp it down, it's just going to be like a slingshot and come back harder. So I, I definitely recommend if, if I'm telling you what I am doing again, not a financial advisor, but in my portfolio, it's going to be 70, 30 silver to gold when I get the opportunity. Um, that's how much I believe in, in what they're, in what we're doing. Um, a mixture of coins and bars. Uh, again, the way I look at it in my brain is I compartmentalize. I look at the coins as barterability. One ounce of silver will be able to feed and clothe your family for a month. Uh, junk silver, which is 90% silver, Pre-1965 JFK coins and such, uh, as an example, nickels, dimes, quarters, um, those are still very valuable. 90% silver, you can use that to buy your everyday things, uh, gas, clothes, you know, laundry detergent, whatever, that type of thing. Um, that's going to be important for barterability in the, in the short run of things, and even to an extent after that. Uh, so, and then I look at the bars, meaning 10-ounce bars, down the road, if you can do it, 100 ounce bars and the like, that's your wealth preservation. That's going to be your hedge against inflation because come September 18th, which is only less than three weeks away, they've already, the Fed has already built in a 50 basis point, a half a percent interest rate drop. That's what they did 16 years ago, if you're keeping score of your history books. And we saw what happened to the economy in 08. What's about to happen is going to make that look like a mild cold. But people don't need to worry if they're on these channels because if they're prepared, they should be prepared. And it doesn't matter, like you said, if you only have 20 bucks, get what you can. And, and I, I have something to say, Carolyn, for those on my channel, those on your channel who say, well, I don't have any money or I'm broke or I'm poor or I'm this or that. Okay, I, I can respect that. I can understand that. But by speaking that, you just spoke death over yourself, whether you know it or not, number one. Number two, you're not a victim. You're not helpless. You have talents. You have skills. There will be people in your circle who will barter with you. If you're a good cook or you're a good seamstress or you can build and do construction or rebuild cars, use the talents of your personal currency to barter with somebody else in payment of silver, maybe payment in currency. Here's the other thought that I want to drive home to people. What makes you think that those of us who are about to be blessed aren't going to take care of you. Did it even occur to you that some of us have very intent plans to help the poor, the needy, the sick, the lonely, the hungry, the widows, the orphans? This is my desire, says the Lord, for Kim Clement. So many of us already have plans. So you're making a supposition that God's people aren't going to help you. And that's that's not wise, in my opinion, because you're, you're cutting off the flow of what could, can and wants to come to you by speaking in, yes, it's your present tense, but it's also going to be your past tense. So kind of think with the end game in mind, just do what you can, do your best, you know, and God will do the rest. Very wise. Thank you, John, for saying that. I think that was so yeah. wise. Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, one other thing before I forget, um, our men do a Bible study in our church twice a month. And I was walking in the field, as you know, this morning, and it dawned on me, I said, God, 
give me impetus for the show, like anything that I haven't thought of. And he's so faithful, as you know, you ladies know to do that. And last week's Bible verse, interestingly enough, I didn't think about it until today is so apropos for what we just discussed. And that would be <clears throat> Proverbs 10 verses two through three, which says tainted wealth has no lasting value, but right living can save your life. The Lord will not let the godly go hungry, but he refuses to satisfy the craving of the wicked. So to me, that means he's taking the wealth of the wicked and bringing it over to the just. So he's got his people. So for yes. whatever that's worth. I think yes. that's a very good message for people to know that, that God is always with them. He will always provide for you. And I think that's important for people to understand, because I know that there's probably people out there just like Carolyn, you've encountered them and John, you've encountered them where people are saying, I don't have, I can't do. It's okay. Because God will never leave you nor forsake you. Absolutely. He's, he's our source. So John, I have, <clears throat> and I've got um, one more topic I want you to address, if you will. Sure. So the Lord Please. told me, and I think it was yesterday, the Zimbabwe bond, and that was the way I said it. So maybe can you address if that was correct or not? So I'm going to address that. There's actually two other points. Let me see if I can, I'm going to try to share this with you guys. I hope I can do it. Because, okay, good. Yes. So let me, let me just cue this up. <clears throat> let me know when you can see it. Um, you yes, should see my ex post here. Okay. So can you see that? Okay. With Nelson Chamisa. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So let me just uh, get rid of this box. Sorry, folks. Just a lot of technical stuff to do here. Yeah. So, okay. So Zimbabwe, let's first of all, break down Zimbabwe before we get into that, because we need a little subtext here. First of all, Zimbabwe is the undisputed kingpin of gold in the world. They've got trillions of tons below ground, above ground. They haven't been able to access it because of ding, 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 corruption and black diamonds and all that kind of, you know, the mining issue with that blood diamonds, I should say, excuse me. Um, but that's all being changed because of this godly gentleman, which I'm going to ask you, Carolyn, at the end to pray for. So in 2008, 2009, they had the Zim Bonds, 2008 AA series. That's the one that I'm holding. They took it out of circulation. People assumed because they took it out of circulation that it was no good. Nay, nay, not true. Because they have tried over the years to do different currencies that have failed because they weren't asset backed. Well, of course, if you don't have anything to back your currencies, like we don't have here in the U.S., tell me what is back in the U.S. Absolutely nothing. The good faith and credit of the U.S. government? Do you have any faith and credit in the government? I haven't had it in a long time. Besides, we are the government, by the way. So we're not a we're not a democracy. We're a constitutional republic. That needs to also be reminded as well in the days ahead. Yes. That being said, that being said, Zimbabwe is an absolute powerhouse. They have diamonds, gold, silver, amazing waterfalls, beautiful, lush tropical lands for farming and crops, and so on and so forth. Um, just let me look at my notes here. They have come out with, I think it was about six weeks, two months ago, roughly. Don't quote me on that. The ZIG, the ZIG dollar, which is digitally token asset backed in real gold. So it's not, it's not, uh, you know, it's not a CBDC. It's not any of that stuff. Central bank digital. It's none of that. It's, it's real. It's, it's digital gold. That's from physical gold under, under the ground that's backing the new dollars. Now, this gentleman here I'm pointing to, Nelson Chamisa, is a born-again Christian. He is the Trump of that region. And they had elections on August 23rd, and then all of a sudden it went dark. And everybody came descending on me, oh, I haven't heard anything. It's not going to happen. I'm like, hey, 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 stop jumping to conclusions. Stop, you know, cool your jets there. It's, it's not like that. Um, what is hidden shall be revealed. Well, he came out today and said, Zimbabwe is blessed and it has everything it needs. The fight is a different type of fight, spiritual warfare, Ephesians 6, 12. We have fought the fight and that fight is done. Victory confirmed. He's doing what Trump does. He gives you comms along the way. So he's talking to his people and then he's talking to the media, right? But he's basically, he is the people's choice over there. They have a very nefarious guy there. Uh, not unlike us, Emerson Mangala, who's been subjugating his people, keeping them down. I know you told me, Carolyn, you had a gal from Zimbabwe who was helping you with this. She can probably confirm it. But for a long time, they wouldn't even let their, uh, their national, I'm going to call them nationals, their, their national uh, people of Zimbabwe get to 
the Zimbabwe bonds because they knew what they were really worth. Now, here's an X factor that some of your audience may know. <clears throat> Speaking of President Trump, did you know that, let me, let me get out of this so that we can uh, have our three-way again. Um, did you know that when President Trump was the head of the show, The Apprentice, do you remember that back in 2015? He took a contestant aside <laughs> off air and said, quote, here's a $100 trillion note of Zimbabwe. It's not worth very much right now, but very soon it's going to be worth a lot. Wow. He's holding it as well. So don't you let these bots and fools and knuckleheads try to talk you out of your blessing. That's just worthless minions trying to gin up dissension. Let's stop helping them, folks. We really need to work together as a community. It doesn't matter who thinks they're right or not. None of that stuff matters. The only goal here is for God's giving people to win. That's why I came out from behind the scenes. That's why our team is wholly divested in this, so that God's people can win. End of story. That's all that matters. Your opinions are fine and all that, but what really matters at the end is we start locking arms to cross the finish line. So that's kind of the, the, the sort of the answer to the, to the Zim bond versus um, dollars. So. Yes. Okay. Okay. Very good. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. And it was a viewer who corrected me that the, it wasn't right to say the word bonds because it would be Zimbabwe zig. Right. But, but in fact, you're saying I was cor that I heard God correctly. When you he did. You did. There's two iterations. There's the Zig dollar optically, and then there's the Zim bonds on the sidelines. Once he comes back, he said, I'm going to do he can make three promises like Trump has made 20. And the reason that they can make the promises, ladies, is because they've already done it. It's already done. So otherwise they couldn't do it with any sort of, you know, scruples. So he said he's going to free his people from tyranny. He's going to remove the corruption and he's going to free and make them prosperous. And he knows exactly how he's going to do that. If you notice, he's wearing a lot of gold ties like Trump does. Those are a lot of comms that you got to pick up when you're kind of watching for the details. So, well, God bless the people in Zimbabwe. That is wonderful for them. I'm excited for them. Yeah, if you ladies wouldn't mind praying for Nelson Chamisa right now, I think it would be, we can lock arms with that. It would be critical for people to be doing. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to glean and learn more about all of these exciting things that you're going to do to prosper your people. And Father, we lift up Nelson. Um, Jamisa. 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 I'm sorry. And Father, we just okay. ask that you anoint him and you just bless him, that Lord, that you lead him, that you give him favor, and that everything he does prospers. And Father, we just thank you so much that he is going to bring Zimbabwe people into prosperity, peace, and a wonderful country. And we just ask that you bless his family, that you protect him, that you protect his family. And Father, we just thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Now, I promised you and a couple of the viewers that I would talk about one other thing that always comes up in these discussions with currencies, and that is the Venezuelan Boulevard. So let's take care of that. Yes. So um, the reason that that's going to be a promising country is because Venezuela was fourth in the world in economy. That's some of the richest oil, again, gold, silver, many other things. Um, they have another corrupt guy in um, Nicolas Maduro, who's lying and cheating and stealing, part of the old guard, nothing new. I'm going to take you backwards to forwards in time. 2019, February, President Trump had a State of the Union. And he said, and I quote, um, Venezuela is going to be a prosperous country again, despite their bleak outlook right now. Um, once we get rid of corruption and bring in the proper leadership, they will flourish. And he pointed to the second row or the second deck of the um, State of the Union building. And he said, Juan Guaido, will be the next successor for Venezuela. Then you go here to when he was at the Doral in Miami before the assassination attempt. And he said, oh, we've got a lot of illegal immigration problems. Caracas, Caracas, Venezuela, Venezuela. Whenever President Trump says something twice, pay attention because he's giving you a calm. He's speaking to the public and then he's speaking to us as truthers. Then he said, and I quote, you can roll it back. He said, we'll go visit them next year 
when they're free and prosperous. So that is a currency that I'm looking at after the dinar, the dong, the zim, the Indonesian rupiah. That's going to go, we believe, in this first wave, if you will. I don't know how many will go beyond that. I'm just speaking to the ones that I'm sure of. We believe next year there will be another wave. Thai bots, another good one to get. I've talked to Thai, Thailand business people over the over you know just passing and business meetings and such, and they're very excited about the future of their country. They know what the bot is worth, and not everyone, but some of the business people that do trade and commerce know what their potentiality is. So the, the Thai bot, but that's when we feel next year the uh, the boulevard is going to run, and uh, and that will be very ridiculously affordable right now. Um, but again, ask God if he wants you to have it. But that's the, the short of it with the boulevard. It's, it's got a lot of promise to it. Very exciting. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. John, thank you very much. This has thank been you. so informative. I've been taking notes. And uh, <laughs> we're going to have to have you back to give us more information. We hope you will join us again. You really feel like torturing your audience again? <laughs> <laughs> there, I'm sure they are absolutely as much enthralled as we have been. I, I've been taking notes very mm -hmm. diligently, and I'm going to have to sit down here and figure out how to do things. But uh, the information is just, I, I know our viewers are going to be blessed by it as well. I pray so. I mean, that was the idea was just to get in the hands of the right people so that they can they can go and flourish. That's the goal here. Yes. Well, we've had a lot of communication with people telling us they couldn't wait to see this show and uh, and and many of your fans. So um, your your viewers. So um, we're mm -hmm. excited to uh, put this out for everyone. And we just can't thank you enough, John, for your your time, your expertise, sharing your wisdom with us and 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 for just for being our friend. We appreciate it so much. And uh, do you have anything else? I just want to say thank you again. Your time is so valuable and we're just so very thankful that you and humbled that you'd come on our show and um, share with our viewers as well. And so thank you again. We're I'm, I'm excited about it. <laughs> Good. Good. Well, thank you, ladies. I appreciate the opportunity. I pray it blesses somebody. If it Even if it helped just one person, then it was worth it. Yes. Absolutely. And John, uh, there was a few things you mentioned that we, you know, I'll get the description from you and mm -hmm. we have, we'll have some stuff in the description box that John talked about, um, how they, you, um, I think it's your uh, club where they can find the links to different things that mm -hmm. they may be interested in perhaps purchasing. Um, so we, we will have all of that information. So you guys check out the description box too. And, of course, if you haven't subscribed to John's channel, we ask that you do that as well. So mm -hmm. thank you, everybody. Um, we appreciate you watching today, and we wish you well. God bless, and we will see you soon. God bless. Shalom.